So now we're getting into the real fun stuff as far as trigonometric identities go. It's called the Pythagorean identities. This is what we're talking about today. And these are like quotient and reciprocal identities in the sense that you can take a trig uh, equation of sorts and simplify it using a special equation that is always true. And here's the first example of this. Uh, this guy right here. When you have an angle, theta, and you're doing sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta, the result of it is always, always zero. I'll give you an example of how this works. If my equation were something like sine squared of 30 degrees plus cosine squared of 30 degrees, and it said, what is this equal to? Right, so what is this expression on the left equal to? Well, you'd say, hey, I know from my unit circle that sine of 30, I hope you know this, right, is 1 half, so it'd be 1 half squared, plus cosine of 30, hope we know that, it's radical 3 over 2 squared, you figure out what that equals to. Well, 1 half squared is 1 quarter, and radical 3 over 2 squared, you square the top and you square the bottom, and what's that? That's just equal to 4 quarters. So you see that's equal to 1. And it wouldn't have mattered if I said 30 degrees, although that's a very nice example. Uh, or, I don't know, let's pick something that's not nice. 37 degrees. This would also be true for 37 degrees. That would e be equal to 1. Or 100 degrees or whatever else angle you come up with. Sine squared plus cosine squared is always equal to 1. Okay? Now, um, there's a way to remember this. And if you like these little phrases that we talk about in class, this one is Santa Claus is number one. Okay, just remember Santa Claus is number one. That's your Pythagorean identity for sine squared and cosine squared. Now, this is written in all sorts of ways. Some people um, just write it this way. Some people find that it's also useful to know a couple more of these. Sine squared equals one minus cosine squared. See what I did there? I just moved the cosine over. No biggie. Or you could move the sine over and say cosine squared equals one minus sine squared theta. Or if you wanted, um, if you wanted, well, we could rearrange this some more. Let's try sine squared, and I'm going to, instead of subtracting cosine squared from each side, let's subtract one from each side and subtract the cosines from each side. You could say this is equal to negative cosine squared theta, right? All I'm doing here is just rearranging how that first equation is written. So you might see any number of these come up as useful things these guys right here. But they're all derivative from the first equation. If you know that first one, you don't need to memorize the rest of these as long as you're comfortable switching things around a little bit. Okay? So, moving on. That's the first Pythagorean identity. Here's another one. And we went over this one in class. 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. Doesn't matter what the angle is. 30 degrees, 50 degrees, whatever. And this one actually comes from the Santa Claus equation. If you know the Santa Claus identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, then you can figure this thing out. And I'll show you how. I could say sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Okay? What if we divide both sides by sine squared? Let's see what happens. I'm sorry, by um, cosine squared. So divide both sides by cosine squared. Everything. And what we get here is tangent squared by the quotient identity. Cosine squared over cosine squared, that's just 1. And 1 over cosine squared by the reciprocal identity is secant squared. And see, that's just what we have here in blue. So if you want, you can just memorize the first one, the Pythagorean identity for Santa Claus. That is the most important one. And then you can rederive the tangent one if you ever need it. Um, if you want to remember this one, just think 1 tan secretary. It's typically how people remember that one. They just think of tan secretaries, and oh, there we go. 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. And likewise, there's a whole bunch of ways you could rearrange this. You could say tangent squared theta equals secant squared minus 1, and who knows what else you'll come up with. It kind of depends on what equation you're dealing with. So there's one more Pythagorean identity right here, which, again, you could get from the original one. If you took the original equation, sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, and divide everything by sine squared. Okay, divide by sine squared all over the place, and you'll see that we get 1 plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. And you see I'm leaving out the angles, but if we want to be a little more precise, we can 
uh, put angles on all these things, just to be a little more clear about what's happening. All right? So the phrase for this one, if you want to remember all three of them, this is one cottage, one cottage cheese. If you come up with a better one, I am all ears. But for now, what we've got is Santa Claus is number one, one's hand secretary, and one cottage cheese. These will come in handy many, many times. They're very important.